Outer Wilds is one of the most gripping and intriguing games I have ever played, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the game design techniques that actually make this possible. So, spoiler warning from this point onwards, guys, and welcome to the anatomy of Outer Wilds. So, to begin with, this game feels like your box standard walking simulator, but in space? You travel from planet to planet, reading logs and researching the history of the races that came before you, just happily running around minding your own business, and then the sun explodes. And this is where the game truly begins. Outer Wilds is entirely based off of mystery, and piecing together the puzzle of how and why the sun actually explodes. So I'm going to try my very best not to spoil any big moments in this video, so that you'll still have a chance to go and play it after watching this, but still have the freedom to talk about its game design elements. So in my two previous anatomy episodes, we spoke about how to motivate your player to continue playing your game. Hades use of intrinsic, extrinsic and narrative motivation, and Stardew Valley's balance of its long and short term goals. Yet take my knowledge mind statue. Thanks mate. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, but the question is, how do you motivate your player to continue playing if there are no extrinsic rewards to give them, or intrinsic long term goal end of the game to aim for? And Outer Wilds is a beautiful study in how you can motivate a player entirely through narrative motivation. The key to narratively motivating your player is giving them a meaningful hook to get them to seek out the answer to a question, like what's going to happen next, or in the Outer Wilds case, what? And that's the genius of how this game begins. You're dropped into the world with zero knowledge of who you are, what you're doing or why, but with someone to talk to. This first guy only gives you a vague goal of who to talk to next, and this lack of information you have at this point encourages you to talk to these villagers, and they can give you some information about the state of the planet and some small gameplay tutorials to introduce you to the game's mechanics, but this is all optional, and this sets a precedent for the rest of the game. That gathering knowledge is the key to figuring out what to do, and this is placed firmly in the player's hands. This is essentially a non-intrusive tutorial. These NPCs can give you vague hints on what you could do, or where to go and what you might find. These are little mystery hooks to entice the player, like the quantum moon that disappears the moment you move away from it, or the binary planets where one is consuming the other through a gigantic ash tornado. Here it comes! Or the distant sound of a banjo being played on an uninhabitable planet. And yes, the sound of a banjo. Because Outer Wilds makes sound one of its main investigation and navigation tools while using the signal scope. And as a sound designer, this just made me so incredibly happy. And not only that, it also has some really interesting game design applications. The Outer Wilds are not silent. You can pick up ambient noise from distant planets, music, and even scam calls while using the signal scope, knowing its exact location and distance. And each one of these signals leads to something interesting, so they act as additional hints on where to explore. But not only that, the sounds you can hear give just enough information that you'll start asking questions about what it is, what's creating it, and why. And this adds a lot of added mystery motivation to what is essentially just a compass. And I hate compasses. Wait, wait, no, 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 not all compasses. I'm not some form of magnetic navigation racist. I mean modern game design compasses, ones that just point you in the direction of your quest. Having one of these in your games just encourages the player to stare at these compass markers and nothing else, rather than actually looking at and engaging with the game world itself. And this doesn't give room for the player to actually ask any meaningful questions or make any decisions. And in game design, we actually have a term for this, and it's shit. Ugh, don't get me wrong, both of these are essentially the exact same designs. They both point the player in a direction of a point of interest, but one has been sonified to add mystery, fear, and genuine player-driven intrigue to its navigation. Uh, the conversion of narrative or gameplay mechanics into sound is called sonification. 
I'm sorry to pause here guys, random fact of the day. In 1996, when the Galileo spacecraft passed over Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede, they sonified the radio signals it was producing and turned them into sound, producing this. Ooh, that's spooky. Uh, back to the video. Out of Wilds sonified its compass mechanic to make it more interesting and to amplify the game's strengths, which are narrative and mystery. But anyway, enough about me just gushing over the sound design. All of this gives the player full autonomy to choose exactly where they want to go based on these sonified sound clues. And the beauty of Outer Worlds is that no matter where you go, you are always gaining new information to decipher the mystery of why the sun keeps popping, always finding a new piece to the puzzle, creating this spiderweb connection conspiracy as you delve deeper and deeper into this mystery. If it exists in this game, it is worth your time checking it out. It never wastes your time in its exploration. And it's the game's unique use of time that is another genius design decision. Outer Wilds is based on a cycle. Each day you have exactly 22 minutes to gain as much new information as you can before the pop happens again. And in these 22 minutes, the solar system changes and decays consistently as you approach its inevitable doom. The binary planets consuming one another in an endless dance, the asteroid that falls its icy exterior revealing its mysteries inside as its orbit takes it closer and closer to the heat of the sun. Each one of these planets is decaying and changing in some way, revealing new mysteries to be uncovered that change based on what time you land on each planet and how much time you spend there, raising more questions. Well, if I get to this planet quick enough, will I have enough time to explore its cave systems before they fill with ash? And if I wait long enough for the ash to be turbo sucked off the other planet, what will I find underneath it? And each and every one of these questions and mysteries are so enticing that I would be so eager to get back to each planet once the reset happened that I would forget to put my spacesuit on and just choke like a pleb. Dumbass. This management of time and cycle can be frustrating though. Well, for example, there is a secret that I knew was there hidden underneath this ash planet. And once I got to this thing, it would lead me to a flying challenge that I could easily fail, resetting me back to the beginning of the game. The problem here is that if you do fail and want to retry it, you have to wait eight minutes waiting for the ash to drain before you can even have a chance of trying it again. Bullshit. This is not fun. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I do have to admire the developer's commitment and attention to detail in the physics, gravitational pull, and inner workings of each of these planets' ecosystems, even down to how the planets orbit the sun realistically. Uh, Super Bunny Hop made a video on the realistic simulation of the planets' orbits and the difficulties within the design of that, so I'll skip over that and just go check out his video, it's amazing. All of this time-constrained change creates more intrigue through its level design to drive the player towards the story rather than just telling it to them. Discovering information which is meaningful and interesting, providing enough choice and freedom to create a fun and unique Ludo narrative. Uh, we spoke about Ludo narrative in my last episode on Stardew Valley. Uh, play the clip editing, Jermaine. So instead of a conventional story which is delivered via text boxes or in-game events, the narrative is driven by the player's own actions in that environment, creating their own story from play. Uh, yeah, cheers mate. Uh, Outer Wilds leaves discovering the narrative completely up to the player and does not force anything upon them, leading to an easily created Ludo narrative. This form of freedom is rarely seen in games and especially in ones that entirely focus around narrative. And because the player has full control of where they go, what they do, with the combination of the cycles and events on each planet, this creates a lot of memorable experiences that are unique to each player. For me, personally, my favourite was my first ever Super Mario. After slowly discovering the nature of my home planet, I set off on my first ever voyage to the stars. Never paddled a ship, let alone safely landed on another moving planet. Well, I manage it by the skin of my teeth and land upon a barren planet that is orbited by a volcanic asteroid that rains hell upon it relentlessly. I attempt to take shelter within the planet's twisting internal caverns, but this doesn't fare any better, because the planet is slowly being consumed by a black hole. In awe at the devastation I am witness to, I stand frozen. A stray rock destroys the platform I stand upon, and I plummet to my inevitable doom. But I don't die. 
passing through the black hole coming out on the other side in an unknown location. Conveniently, somebody has built a satellite with the capability of transporting me back to the barren planet I came from, so I buckle up and prepare for the journey back. But once on the other side of this, I am not where I started. I am on a completely different planet with no idea where I am. I somehow stumble across some ruins and find a message left by an ancient settler, and as I read, the universe seems to go silent. A distant flash catches my eye as I exit the building, and I immediately knew it was all over, and I quietly waited for my inevitable doom. Waking up where I once started with a single question at the tip of my tongue. This is single-handedly one of the most memorable gaming moments I have ever had in my entire life. And it all happened in the first 22 minutes of gameplay. And this form of storytelling is something that is unique to games as a medium. In film and literature, there is a famous phrase, show, don't tell. Instead of telling the viewer something happened, we'll show them. And in game design, we have the unique situation where instead of just showing the player the event, we can have them perform it themselves, creating Ludo narrative. And Outer Wilds has some of the most seamless and engaging storytelling I have ever seen. Also, can I just say that this death mechanic and the resetting, along with this sonified compass mechanic, are both diegetic to the game world, which really just butters my immersion egg roll. Uh, that's all. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Well, Hollow Knight won the vote to become the 1k sub special anatomy episodes, and patrons get to vote on these future episodes along with a host of other benefits. So if you do enjoy this series, please consider supporting its production along with this team of wonderful people. Thank you so much for the support, I'll see you in the next one.